going on everybody it's Poodle back with another madden ultimate team video guys and today i'm gonna be ranking each and every core elite running back for madden 22 guys so pretty much there's gonna be a list of running backs down below what you got to do is you got to go ahead pick where you think their overall will be and as well go ahead and pick if they won't be elite anymore so i think there actually may be a guy or two that i saw for, like just off a quick glance that definitely are dropping down to gold so this will be interesting to do we have up from we have from not elite all the way up to 88 overall with all the corresponding overalls in the middle with a lot of colors there i guess to that a lot of boxes to fill and then of course we have a list of let's see 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 running backs to do so there will be some repeats in some categories as you guys know the top ones typically only have one guy per overall and then the bottom ones typically can have like two to three to four guys in one spot like an 80 overall that could be four guys 81 that could be like three 82 and 83 could be like two and so on and so forth now before we get into the video guys first i want to give a shout out to the guy who created this list madden bros at madden bros on twitter at madden bros capital g n that's his twitter handle he created this list so shout out to him now if you guys are new to the channel hit that subscribe button turn the notify bell boys i'm definitely excited for some more madden 22 news but i've made this channel very madden 22 oriented at this point madden 21 is a dead game at this point i have no pleasure in playing it i'm excited to look into this is more fun to me in my opinion and i'm definitely excited been playing the beta definitely fun some improvements are there to be made but it's sounding like a promising game but let's get into this so let's start with the first guy on the list we hit it from the back sit it from the front sake uh sorry Mar mark ingram I almost called him melvin mark ingram running back where do i think he's going to fall on this list i think he's one of the guys that will fall to not elite he was phased out towards the second half of last year jk dobbins has taken over that backfield he was already only an 82 overall base elite i think he actually falls i mean at, at the best i think he's an 80 but i think he'll actually go to the gold spot like a gold 79 overall it's definitely moving past it's definitely moving past the mark ingram phase in his career but again he's been good for a long long time right or at least decent right he's been he's been he's been in the nfl for a while but i think he ends up being a not elite saquon barkley i think saquon barkley again in my opinion he's an 88 but this isn't based off talent and skill it's based off the fact that he was injured he didn't perform last year because he, he missed the whole season with an acl and he's coming off a pretty traumatic injury which is an acl tear which always i mean many players come back you know fine sometimes even better you know adrian peterson uh but again it comes it come, depends on the athlete you are how injury resistant you are and how injury prone you are to something happening again but saquon i think I think he's an 82 again i don't think they're gonna knock him for what happened i don't think he'll go up but i think he stays at an 82 once again todd Gurley. todd Gurley is a tough one so he was an 81 overall there's a chance that he falls to the 80 overall i, I don't want to say not elite because i don't think they're going to write off todd Gurley just yet he had a decent decent year but i think an 80 overall base elite but i think he actually is in line to maybe be a not elite as well but i'll put him at the 81 overall base elite joe mixon I think ends up falling in that 82 category as well uh with joe burrow back i think he'd actually have a great year but in terms of madden i think he ends up as an 82 for this specific year um moving on we have dalvin cook now dalvin cook had a tremendous year has really cemented himself as a top three or two running back in the league in terms of just pure talent and skill any performance right? it's not just like you know saquon's the kind of guy where he know he's probably the best back in the league but he's got to stay healthy he could use a better supporting cast but dalvin was doing it all his explosiveness, his ability to juke, his agility, his catching, his big play ability. He's the do-it-all kind of NFL back that you really want. He was an 84. I actually think he goes up to an 86 overall this year. Um, I think he definitely goes up to there at least at bare minimum. Uh, next, we have Chris Carson. I think Chris Carson is your stereotypical, you know, lower end 81 overall back right here. You know, the stereotypical generic lower end Madden back. Um, again, I actually don't think Chris Carson's all that great in a real life perspective. Uh, personally, yes, he performs. He gets his stats. He's a, he's a run, he's on a run-heavy squad. I think that you know, had they had a more generational type back on their team, they could do crazy numbers. But he's still he's you know, no disrespect, he's an NFL player. I think he's still great. I just don't think he's better than the guys above him. I think he ends up as an 81 overall mutt. Okay, so we get Ezekiel Elliott. Now Ezekiel Elliott didn't have the greatest year, and that's primarily because the Cowboys just fell apart after the Dak injury with Andy Dalton coaching. Everything just fell apart. I think Ezekiel Elliott actually drops down one spot to an 84. I think, you know, he's still a top back in the league. He's still probably like a top six or seven back. I think he'll actually reclaim that spot and go up to more of a higher end, you know, in terms of, let's say, next year. But for the time being, an 84. Aaron Jones. Now, Aaron Jones actually had a tremendous year. I think Aaron Jones actually does go up a bit. I think Aaron Jones actually, and in that, in that sense, actually, I'm going to move Ezekiel Elliott down to an 83. I think Aaron Jones ends up as an 84 overall. He had a great year. I don't think he ends up being one of the top rated backs, but I think he actually goes up to an 84. Um, again, with Aaron Rodgers out, he may actually have a potential. If Aaron Rodgers doesn't play, his stats may go down a bit because Aaron Rodgers just gets him in the red zone all the time. They're so worried about him and what he could do. Definitely opens it up for Aaron Jones. 
Melvin Gordon. Melvin Gordon is dangerously close to not being an elite. I actually think he won't be an elite just because of... I think he might actually fall to the you know, elite status. It's, it's, very, it's very likely that he... No. Ah, uh, this is tough. I'm going to put him as a base 80, maybe. I'll put him as a base 80 with Todd Gurley. Because, again, he's in, like, a similar situation to Todd Gurley where they, they get some stats, but they're not really the greatest anymore in terms of... It's more about the situation, right? But moving on, we have Derek Henry. Derek Henry, in my opinion, actually takes the top spot in Madden 22. I think he had that kind of year. He was borderline like an MVP can in a lot of people's eyes. He did it all. He showed big playability. He showed unrivaled power he showed top end speed he even showed some agility in some instances where i was like okay he's a north and south guy but he even went left and right and even when he does they do get to him but he just throws him off him next we have leonard fournette i actually think leonard fournette stays as an elite he actually had been 81 he had a pretty decent run with the bucks i mean towards the second half of the year he was making big plays he was a big part of their playoff run to the super bowl and the super bowl eventual victory uh, i think leonard fournette actually goes to an 81 he's pretty good i mean he's a solid back he just had some injury problems wasn't in a good situation in jacksonville I actually think he could have done pretty well with trevor lawrence but you know they moved on from that raheem mostert raheem mostert is actually really good Remos is a good back. He's he's a really good back. You know, he's maybe not like an every down do it all back, but he's good. He's insane. He's blazing fast. I think he actually ends up in that 81 spot too again. He's been a mutt favor for a while too as well in terms of early in the year. I think he stays as an 81, you know, a very generic overall right there. Gonna have high speed. Great budget day one back. Moving on, we got Nick Chubb. Nick Chubb, I believe. Had a great year, of course. His stats would have been even crazier if he didn't mix it with Cream Hunt. And then maybe not. Maybe he would have gotten injured if he had to mix it in more with Cream Hunt. He did get hurt for a little bit. Uh, but Nick Chubb showed that he was one of the top backs when healthy. 85 overall for Nick Chubb, I believe, is fair. But right there above Aaron Jones, but definitely below Dalvin Cook. Dalvin Cook could actually even be higher, but I have him there for now. Um, but Nick Chubb, in line for another great year. Him and Kareem are a great one-two punch. Of course, Baker's been playing much better. Odell's coming back. Definitely helps the offense. It just opened up from every facet of the game. But I definitely like Nick Chubb. He's a great back. Um, kind of like a Derrick Henry-esque build where he's more of a north-south runner. But definitely, I mean, I can't tell who's faster. I mean, Nick Chubb is really fast. They both run like... They're like chunky fast, right? When they're running, it doesn't look fast, but you could clearly see they're moving past people. Um, probably because they're just so muscular and, you know, tall and stuff. I mean, I don't think Nick Chubb's nearly as tall as Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry's like six foot two or three. Um, next we have C Mac. Christian McCaffrey. I think Christian McCaffrey probably falls on the 87 overall spot for the most part. He probably ends up being an 87. Uh, he was an 88 last year, which would have been the top back, but he did get hurt for. A majority of the year i mean yeah he came back like four or five times but he ended up going out very consistently like every other week there was an injury with him it was one of those years where you keep bringing that guy back just too early and something just couldn't heal properly we had a, he had an off season he had the playoffs he had plenty of time to heal back up so i think he's gonna be back in that spot like i said had he been healthy all year he probably still be over derrick henry at an 88 spot but i think they'll knock him down one tier just for that reason but otherwise, he's still one of the best backs in the game now. Here's where I don't know where the repeat will be. I think Alvin Kamara, again, shows that he's one of the best backs in the game. Explosive. Camera. One of the best receiving backs in the league. Great at screens. Great at gadget plays. Great at running the ball. Even north-south runner. F knows for the end zone. Finds it all the time. I think Alvin Kamara probably is another. If they do dual players here, I think he ends up with like an 84 overall. They definitely got to do it. They, they can't keep doing him dirty at the gate. They always give Alvin Kamara a pretty bad overall out the gate. I don't know why. I think this year with Mark, Mark Ingram, you know, he's still gone. He's taken on a lead role, even over Lat Murray a little bit. Not that he hasn't had the lead role, but they always like to mix it in. Don't like to give him too much of a workload, but they really gave him a pretty heavy workload this year. And, they, you know, he, he did some, he put up numbers. Uh, Damian Williams is a not elite for me. I mean, it's pretty obvious. He, I think he opted out of last year, so he was already a base 80. And he really only made a base 80 because he was part of the Chiefs Super Bowl run and had some success there. But otherwise, I think he's falling out of that spot pretty, pretty easily, convincingly. Le'Veon Bell. Guys, Le'Veon Bell, one of my favorite backs of the 2010s. He was one of my favorite guys to watch. You know, everyone wants to play like him. The patience, the, the way he ran was just like, it was like art, right? A little slow stuff he did behind the line, reading the holes. He would make any, any run would be a three to four run with, three to four yard run with him because he would find that right hole just to get the extra yards. He wasn't so concerned about the big play. He was more concerned about making sure he got himself in the right spot, which ended up leading to big plays. But he's going to be an out of lead. He was an 81 with the Jets, which actually was even a little bit high considering how bad he was the year prior and the holdout, right? So, like, he was lucky to even hold this spot. He went to the Chiefs. He really didn't do anything. Even when he got the opportunity, all he did was pretty much hurt Clyde Edwards Lair, in my opinion. Clyde was on pace for a pretty good season. Le'Veon Bell came there, probably hurt his confidence a little bit because now he felt like a, you know, a more, a higher stature player with more notoriety was there. 
and I think I hurt him a little bit, and all Le'Veon did was steal some touches, and he just looked, he didn't have that extra burst, and again, Le'Veon Bell's like a, he's like a, uh, what's the word for it in basketball? Like, a, a, a steady shooter, like a guy who can just keep, you know, shoots all game, and I, every shot they take, like, even if they miss it, they'll eventually start making. Le'Veon Bell's that guy, his patient runs may not work one or two times, but then the third and fourth time, he's just nailing you. He kind of, muscle memory picks up, but he doesn't, he wasn't playing enough, right? So that didn't help. He had a bad year, and I'm not sure, you know, where he ends up going from here. I don't know if he'll ever resurge back to higher levels. So I think he actually ends up being a not elite. And Josh Jacobs is actually a really good back. I mean, he's good. Uh, Madden makes him, like, absurdly obese and slow for some odd reason. But I think Ty, I think uh, Josh Jacobs ends up in, like, this 83 category with Zeke. He's a really good back. He had a good year. Probably an 83. But, yeah, guys, that's the total ranking. So from least to from, from worst to best, we have Le'Veon Bell and Damian Williams and Mark Ingram falling out of not elite with uh, Melvin Gordon and Todd Gurley borderline there. But they keep the 80 spot. Uh, Leonard Fournette, Chris Carson, Mostert are 81s. 82s are Saquon and Joe Mixon. 83s are Zeke and Josh Jacobs. 84, Aaron Jones and Alvin Kamara. 85 is Nick Chubb. Dalvin Cook is 86. C Mac is 87. 88 is Derrick Henry. Uh, room for movement. I think Dalvin could actually be one higher, but again, I don't think he goes above McCaffrey. Nick Chubb could also be one higher, but I don't think they put him above Mixon, although you never know. I mean, sorry, above Cook. But I'm going to screenshot this actually real quick so we can remember this. I want to look back at this when they do announce the running back base leads to compare and see how we did. But that's about it for the video. Hopefully you guys did enjoy. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Give this video a big thumbs up as always. That's about it. Thank you so much for watching. I'm out. Peace.